welcome to the Circle of Echo, I'm Lady Amaris. So I thought I'd do another one of these driving things because I'm really busy at the moment and I don't seem to have enough time to set up the camera and just sit in front and, and talk. So I thought I'd again multitask on my way to work. So this one is about solitary or a coven, what do you choose? Now, each has its uh, pros and cons. So we'll look at, uh, we'll look at solitary first because I think that most people that are looking at my YouTube videos are more than likely solitary. Now, a lot of that time, it's because of uh, geography. Um, you're just starting out so you don't know really anyone else. Um, uh, and and that's kind of that's good and bad because again, as I said in my previous video, when you're starting out, you wanna you wanna give it a bit of a go. You wanna you wanna try and work out the your rhythm and the rhythm of the earth. It's you know, witchcraft is about finding out about yourself more than anything else. You find out about yourself, you know yourself, and uh, you know the universe. So that time of being a solitary, um, getting in touch with nature, getting in touch with yourself, uh, getting in touch with the, the goddess and god, if that's, um, if that's how, you, how you go. So that the, the solitary has its good points in, in that respect. You're, you're not you're not persuaded by by others and how they how they work and and, um, and almost losing yourself in, in someone else's practice. Uh, so having a being a solitary is uh, is good. On the um, on the negative side, it's also it's also hard. You are by yourself you are your taskmaster you are the one that says all right well this is this is how my practice goes this is what I will be doing each day this is the direction that I that I will be taking and for some it it's hard because it's like being your own personal trainer um, how do you how do you push yourself do you um, do you strive to, to have a goal or um, do you just kind of, let's, let's use an example, do you just go in front of the altar and light some candles and, and then just go, oh yeah, yeah this, this looks like it's good, yeah, alright, and off you go, you're off with your day. Um, or do you spend a little bit of time uh, meditating and talking to the, to the goddess? Do you, do you look inside yourself and find out you know, certain aspects of yourself to, to bring them out or to, uh, to work out why you are the way you are? And um, in, in the idea that you are going to make yourself a stronger and better uh, and more capable witch. And to do that by yourself takes a lot of willpower. And willpower is something um, some people have straight away and others uh, cultivate it. And when you're by yourself, you really have to be the one that, that, uh, that is driving the ship. Um, now, when it comes to being in a, in a group, then you have someone who is driving the ship, who is saying that, well, at this, this point or this stage, you should have uh, accomplished this, this, and this. Uh, we're all working to a, to a common goal, so everyone has to be on a certain standard to, to, to do this. Everyone has had to you know, learn this, um, accomplish this, achieve this. And uh, it's... It's easier in the fact that you have, you, know, you have a playbook, you have a rule book, you have, you have you know, check boxes. Um, so many people like little check boxes. Uh, they say, uh, well, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, and so I must be a witch now. Um, when a lot of the times it's 
it's those little subtle things that make you a witch. And I've, I've talked about this before. It's not about checking boxes. But when you're with a group, you have also that support. So that when you're feeling a little bit like, oh gosh, I don't really want to do this. Or you've got those days where you know, just life just seems to, to hand you a big steaming pile of poo. Uh, you've got you've got a support network. You've got people that have that have no doubt been through the same things that you've been through. Uh, who can uh, can just be there to lend some support, lend an ear, and that's great uh, having that support. So you have that support network. You have that uh, that group, that uh, that family. Now, in the, in the negative aspect of this, if you're not really uh, good with, with rules and structure, then being in a coven may not be for you. Now, I'm not talking in the fact that it's a, a, a dogmatic um, my way or the highway. And yes, there are some, some groups that are like that. But when you're in a group, you need to have a certain amount of structure. You need to have uh, a, a guideline, a, a guidebook, so that everyone's on the same page. Everyone is visualising the same things. Everyone's working to the same goal. If you don't have that, then everyone's off doing their own thing and you don't have an effective circle. You don't have an effective cover. So there is a, uh, an element of rules and regulations in the fact that everyone needs to be doing the same thing at the same time and thinking and, and visualising the same thing at the same time. And a lot of people aren't, aren't good with rules and structure, so that would mean that uh, being a solitary would work for them. You also have the rules and structure where you have people who, whose ego starts to get a little bit too big for their boots again like I said it's my way or the highway so then we get into the the next part of what do you choose do you choose to be a solitary and as I said sometimes that that choice has been made for you uh, if it's a geography or um, um, you just don't you just don't know anyone at this at this time um, or do you seek out a group now, when you're seeking out a group, um, there are a few things that you need to think about. One, I wouldn't jump blindly head on into, uh, if you do actually find a group, blindly head on into that group. Just for the simple fact is, oh my God, you're the only one in the village. Because um, you're, not, you're not going to let's say um, there's only one guy in town and you're not going to just form into a relationship with that guy just for the simple fact that he's the only male in, in, in the town. Um, you need to have uh, a, a rapport, you need to have, uh, it needs to, to feel comfortable and it needs to, to be something that you feel good about um, and you, you can't have any of those spider senses coming up going, mm, yeah, looks good, but it's like any relationship, you need to take your time and feel it out before you commit to anything, and if you have a group that wants to initiate you straight off the bat, um, yeah, come in, come in, come in, this is our inner circle, uh, come and do some moons with us, um, you know, X, Y, Z, then I would, I would uh, really consider... Um, not <laughs> going with them um, because covens covens are like a, a working machine and each part of that each cog in that machine has, is there for a specific purpose and, and fits and it takes time to make sure that there is a fit and also when a new member comes in oops, sorry about that um, when a new member comes in, uh, it takes time for that, uh, for the you know the energy to shift and re realign itself because there's a new there's a new member there's new there's new energy. So, 
it's not something that's taken lightly, bringing a new member in. Uh, so if someone's doing that, I would, I would think that there is either um, that they they're not really they don't really know what they're doing, or um, there's ulterior motives. Also, if you are young, if you're under 18, most covens worth their salt will not initiate you. They may do a kind of an outer an outer court um, outer court lessons uh, like with ourselves we will uh, we will teach people who are under the age of 18 as long as they have the consent of their parents and we also make sure that um, um, sometimes we we encourage that their parents come to some of the lessons um, depend also depending on how close to the age of 18 they are um, coming to all of the lessons or, or some of the lessons, whichever ones that they want to come to, just so that they know that um, their, their child is, is safe. And, but we will never initiate anyone who is under the age of 18. One, because um, of uh, maturity. And um, there are now, before I go further, there are many, many very, very mature um, teenagers or, or people under the age of 18. Um, but even so, it would mean that they would still have to wait until they are the age of 18 for just for legal reasons. Um, so there is that maturity factor. Um, and again, if someone is, is wanting to initiate you and you are you're underage, um, I would again seriously question their motives. Alright, I am now at work, so I'll cut this off. Where was I? So when you're looking for a coven, um, take your time, like I say with everything, take your time check out the lay of the land if they want to initiate you straight off the bat straight off of uh, meeting you then um, question their motives um, don't say yes straight away um, I know that many of you would be hungry for knowledge and want want someone to be their mentor or want someone to to help and guide them but um, you need like I keep saying have your bullshit detector on are these people um, genuine just think before you leap so I don't want to to paint a bad brush on the coven because the covens are wonderful. Covens are your support structure. Covens help you to to grow and and uh, become um, better than you were before. Uh, people like to work in groups. There's power in groups, but you also have the ability to work on your own as a solitary. And that too is challenging and rewarding. So take a take a look at your path. Um, some of you may dabble in the coven and then go back to solitary. Some of you may stay stol solitary for the rest of your lives. Each path is unique. And just because you may start your path out in a group, does not mean that you end it, and vice versa. So look around, see what's on offer, and whether you fit in, and whether they fit in with you. These people will be your spiritual family. Not all of them you will get on with, so you need to gauge whether it is just they're pushing your buttons, and if they're pushing your buttons, maybe you should uh, look at uh, look at those buttons. 
So I think I'm rambling a little bit. I think we'll, we'll cut off here. Look, listen, and speak. Not so much. And eventually, you will find the right way. Merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again. And uh, we'll be going through a simple little uh, banishing spell that you can do yourself. And we're using limes today. You can use lemons if you like.